Good evening, welcome to Orchard Hill Online, our devotion, our Vesper time together. Uh, if you're on Church Online, if you're on Facebook Live, it really is great to be together. Tonight we're in Psalm 25. And Psalm 25 is long, and so I'm not going to read the whole psalm, not even going to try to comment on everything that's here. But here's how the psalm starts. It starts with this. It says, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. And this is, is just a beautiful statement of saying, I hope in you in the middle of anything and everything that's happening in my life. And I, I was just thinking about this and I was seeing some of the stats on this COVID-19 pandemic that we're living through right now. And let me just give you some stats. And, and the reason I do this is not to play into all of the stats as much as just to say we are living in a time in which if ever we needed to hope in our Lord, th this is one of those times. Here's how many people died in 9-11 uh, on the whole attacks. Two, 2,969. The Iraq War, 4,431. The Korean War, 33,739. This is according to a New York Times article, if you're wondering where I got my stats. Vietnam War, 47,434. World War I, 53,402. The flu and pneumonia in 2017, 55,672, which it's interesting we didn't hear a lot about that. Uh, H2N2 flu in 1957-58, 116,000. Alzheimer's in 2017, 121,000. The Civil War, 215,000. World War II, 291,000. And then the Spanish flu was 675,000. Most estimates today are saying at least 100,000. Those are just United States deaths, by the way. Most estimates are saying somewhere between 100,000 and 200,000 people will die, which means more people than any war except World War II uh, in all likelihood. And some estimates put it as high as 400,000. So how do you hope in the Lord when, when death is around us like this? In fact, I, I saw one 
person say that if you know you kind of are one of these people who says, "Hey, I'll just take my chances. I'll get it, and it'll be what it is." And they said, "If you had a hundred skittles, would you?" eat Skittles knowing that one of them would kill you. Um, that's the kind of uncertainty we live in. And here's what Psalm 25 does, is it addresses several issues in our lives. Here are some of them. Verse 15, it addresses danger. My eyes are ever toward the Lord. He will pluck my feet out of the net. Verse 16, it addresses loneliness. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely. Verse 17, the troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distress. And so you have sadness, distress. Um, verse 18, we have regrets. Consider my affliction and my trouble. Forgive all my sins. Verse 19 and 20, we have fear. Consider how many are my foes and with what violent hatred they hate me. Oh, guard my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame. And then verse uh, 21, 22, we move all the way to despair. My integrity and uprightness preserve me for I wait for you. Redeem me, O God. Redeem Israel out of all of his troubles. And, and, and here's why I, I read those verses and just highlight that. Because as we look at that, even without this pandemic, chances are there are days when you feel danger, you feel lonely, you feel sadness, you feel regret, you feel fear, you feel distress. So how do we lift our soul to God? Well, this Psalm gives us at least three ideas. There are probably many more. The first is this word wait. It appears three times in the, in the context, verse three, verse five, verse 21. And to wait is to accept God's time and therefore his wisdom. It's to say in essence, I will do right as I wait for God. Verse 21, may integrity and uprightness preserve me as I wait for you. In other words, let me do the right thing. I don't know if you, Remember when you were a kid, if your parents were making a good dinner and they said, don't snack. And you had that moment where you're like, but I want to snack. I'm hungry. I don't want to wait for dinner. And your parents' perspective was always, well, we want you to wait because dinner is coming and dinner is something we've worked hard on and it's going to be good. And as you get older, what happens is you, maybe, maybe not, you develop the ability to say, I'm not going to ruin my dinner with a snack because dinner is going to be worth the wait. And part of waiting on the Lord to renew our soul is saying, even when things appear bleak, I can wait on him because he is working and doing things that I may not see or understand today, but I will someday. And to wait means that I will continue to, to choose to do the right things, even in the midst of a time that's hard. Here's the second thing, and that is, I, I think we experience and find our way to uh, lifting our soul to God when we seek his mercy. Verses six and seven. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. And, and mercy here is, is a word that is used in other places to speak of those who are vulnerable and needy and dependent. It's used in Isaiah 49, 15, for the love of a mother for her child, a nursing baby. In Psalm 103, verse 13, it's used of a father having compassion or mercy for his, his children. And, and it's, it's really the idea here of saying that if you, again, can think of yourself as a child going to your parent and saying, I would love for you to do this for me. That's the idea here of saying, I'll wait for God. I'll come to God. I'll hope in God. I'll turn my soul to God because I can come to God and say, would you work in this situation? I am going to, to pray to you and ask you for your mercy in whatever I'm going through. And, and it means really doing that despite however things appear. Um, uh, you know, because verse 17, again, talks about just distress and trouble. And, and so that's, that's part of it. And then we have this idea, I'm going to say, enjoy God's friendship. Now, I'm reading from the ESV here this evening. It says, the friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him and he makes known to them his covenant. And the NIV says he confides in the people um, who, uh, who fear him. And the same word is used two other times in the Bible, Jeremiah 23, verse 18 and 22, where it speaks of counsel. And here the idea is God is one who, who takes us into his counsel, who is a friend of us, who's with us, who helps us, who wants the best for us. And the reason that, that again, this is so helpful in my mind is to say God is not aloof. 
to say to you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. To say, will you rescue me from, from shame, from difficulty, is to say, in essence, God, I'm going to wait till, till I see your hand. I'm going to seek your mercy. Um, I'm going to be intimate in, in the sense of being your friend in the midst of this is all a way of saying, in essence, God, I'm going to turn towards you rather than away from you. You know, whenever we go through something that's challenging, we have a choice. And the choice is to say, will I go away from what I believe and who God is, or will I go toward God and who he is? Will I lean in or lean away? And in a sense, by partaking in these devotionals, church online, you're saying I'm leaning in. But, but, but what I really want to encourage you to do is say, God, I'm going to lift my soul to you in the midst of this. So let's uh, pray together. And I'm going to just share a prayer today from Thomas Aquinas, who wrote this in the 12th century. Give us, O Lord, a steadfast heart, which no unworthy thought can drag downward. So just take a moment and pray that God would give you a steadfast heart, that your thoughts would be centered and waiting on him, not away from him. Thomas Aquinas continues, Give us, O Lord, an unquenchable heart, which no tribulation can wear out. So think about that. No tribulation can wear out your heart. And then give us, O Lord, an upright heart, which... No, um, which um, uh, nowhere uh, is being tempted to put aside your purposes. And so just ask God to give you a heart that says, God, I'm not going to set aside your purposes today. Father, we thank you that we can place our hope in you, even in times that feel uncertain. And God, I pray that each of us would do that and find our rest and our relief in turning toward you, not away from you. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, don't forget Church Online this weekend, Saturday at 6, Sunday at 9.30, 11.15. You can find it on Facebook Live or on Church Online, uh, which you just go to the Orchard Hill website and follow the links to get it there. Have a great Friday evening. Mm -hmm.